BBC World News, the biggest African and international news stories. Focus on Africa. This is Focus on Africa. I'm Laquesta Burak. Our top stories today. Why it matters to have a seat at the most important table in the world. Why have no African countries been offered a permanent position on the UN Security Council? What the continent would want is to be in a position where it can make its choice about how global events affect it and how much it actually wants it to participate in these broader global debates. The stigma around surrogacy in Kenya, but one community has an unconventional approach. Also in the program, security challenge. With no state presence in sight, armed groups run much of northern Mali. We have a report from a city where Tuareg rebels hold a fragile peace. And in the sports news, Kenya's Liliane Rangaruk is banned after returning a positive doping test. The eighth Kenyan now to be banned since the beginning of July. Well, hello and welcome to Focus on Africa, coming to you from BBC World News. Now, as world leaders continue to meet at the United Nations General Assembly in New York, we're going to start today's show with a very simple question. Why are there no African countries with a permanent seat on the Security Council? For nearly 70 years, its mission has been to ensure global peace and security. In reality, that means introducing sanctions, regimes, and authorizing or vetoing the use of force in conflicts around the world and those are measures which are very familiar to a number of countries across the continent. Just today the Security Council met to discuss Russia's invasion of Ukraine, a conflict which has had a very direct impact on the African continent when it comes to food security. Surely some would argue the continent should be able to have its say, especially when the AU President Macky Sall had uh, this to say yesterday, saying that the continent risks becoming a breeding ground for a new Cold War. Now this is actually a sentiment that has been echoed by the US President Joe Biden. So uh, let's have a quick listen to what he had to say yesterday. The United States. That was uh, BBC Africa's Ian Wafula speaking to Rishon Chimboza, who is the Managing Director for Africa at the Tony Blair Institute for Global Change. We're going to stay with the United Nations uh, General Assembly and another development. It's emerged that the French President Emmanuel Macron met up with the leaders of Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo on the sidelines of the meeting. The French government is trying to defuse tensions between the two African nations. Mr Macron invited the Rwandan president, Paul Kagame, to lunch along with Felix uh, Tshisekedi from the DRC. Now, earlier this week, uh, the DRC president had accused Kigali of backing rebel attacks in his country. For his part, Mr Kagame called for calm and insisted that the blame game did not solve any problems. The issue of surrogacy and arrangement where a woman agrees to have a baby for someone else is controversial wherever you are. Whatever you may think of it, in countries where it is legal, there are laws to protect the surrogate mother. Now in Kenya, there's no specific framework that regulates the practice. And a bill on assisted reproductive technology is still going through Parliament. So what do you do if you want to embark on surrogacy, you want a child? Well, the Kamba in eastern Kenya have their own approach and it appears to work. The BBC's Grace Korea Kanja visited one family to find out more. A quick look at some other stories making the headlines now and the University of Cambridge in the United Kingdom has admitted that it benefited from slavery during its history and promised to expand scholarships for black students and fund more research into the trade. The investigation it commissioned found no evidence that the university itself owned slaves or plantations directly, but it did receive significant benefits, as it put it, from slavery. This announcement comes as many other leading British institutions, such as the Bank of England and the Church of England, are looking back at their role in slavery. The South African government has agreed to install three onshore wind energy plants to provide renewable power. The country has suffered a record year 
for power cuts with the state-owned provider ESCOM struggling to meet demand as its aging coal stations keep failing. Other renewable energy projects are expected to be finalised later this year but none expected to generate electricity until the end of 2024. Well, do stay with us because still to come, Peter has all the sports news as Mali suffer a big defeat at the ongoing Women's Basketball World Cup in Australia. Now in Kidal, a city in northern Mali, armed Tuareg groups are the ones who maintain security and implement Islamic law or Sharia law. And it's not the state who are in place. They gained control of the strategic city in the 2012 rebellion. A peace deal was signed between government and rebels to share the control of Kidal. But it's only been partially implemented. The BBC's Mujahid Dumas looks at how the rebels provide governance and justice to the city's inhabitants. Now, I just want to show you um, this footage. Celebrations were taking place. Have a look at this. <laughs> oh, yes. And with a one million pound award. Well, you can imagine why and understand why there was such celebration. The reason? Sanitary pads, biodegra biodegradable sanitary pads that were made using banana fiber. Now, this is all part of the Holt Prize. It's an annual competition. It's supported by the United Nations and also the former US President Bill Clinton, recognizing young people who are fixing problems around the world. And the problem in this case is period poverty. Now the company is called Eco Banner. It was inspired by the story of Kaylee Muthoni, who actually had to drop out of school because when she hit puberty, her family couldn't afford to buy sanitary uh, pads. In fact, I mean, this is a huge problem in low income countries. UNICEF has found that 1 million Kenyan girls miss school every month because they are on their period. Um, the lady you can see on screen now is Kaylee Mutoni and what I haven't told you is that Kaylee is actually Chief Operations Officer of Ekobane in uh, Limuru in Kenya. Thank you so much for joining us. Huge congratulations. How are you feeling? They'll just let them dry up then the next time they'll keep on Ka using them without Kaylee, all that. Um, it's, it's great. Thank you for sharing your story. Huge congratulations. Absolutely amazing, great story, like I said. Thank you very much and congratulations. That's uh, Kaylee Mutoni there. Joining me now is the Oc, the Arch. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you very much. Glad to be back. Thank you, Lequest. Thanks. All right, uh, let's bring you some of the sports news now. And uh, Kenyan athlete Lilian Rengaruk has been handed a 10 month doping ban after being found to have used a prohibited substance by the Sports Athletics Integrity Unit. There, we got through it. We did. Peter, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Um, and that is it uh, from us uh, for today. Uh, Peter and myself will be back here on Focus in Africa, bringing you all the top stories um, affecting the continent. You can get in touch with us on social media. Peter is there at Okoche and myself as well at Lequesa Burek. Uh, until then, we will see you. Bye bye.